There are some great businesses that we simply never think about. We use their products all the time without even realizing it. These companies rake in profits, their stock prices rise long term, and they pay reliable growing dividends. But most people have never heard of them. One such business is Air Products and Chemicals, one of the world's largest makers and distributors of gases for industrial use. Here's an example of how Air Products affects people's lives without them even knowing it. The company has developed carbon dioxide and nitrogen systems for breweries and taverns, so the beer we drink isn't flat. And here's another example. Air Products gases are critical to the testing, assembly, and packaging of semiconductors that are used to make many of the cell phones, tablets, and other gadgets we can't put down. As an investment, APD stock has been sneaky good too. It's outperformed the overall market the last 3, 5, 10, and 20 years, and it's a dividend aristocrat, having grown its payout to shareholders for 39 consecutive years. In this video, I'll talk about the company's history and its financial picture, why I felt it was a good addition to our income builder portfolio, and how it might appeal to dividend growth investors. Hi everybody, Mike Nadell here for the Dividends and Income channel. Before I talk more about this outstanding company, please do us a favor to help us keep growing. Hit the thumbs up at the bottom of the video, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell so you get notifications of new videos as we publish them. Now let's get right into Air Products and Chemicals. Their story began in Detroit in 1940, when a businessman named Leonard Parker Poole founded the company to produce and market industrial gases. Sales were slow at first, so the company concentrated on aiding the World War II effort by producing oxygen generators to be used in high-altitude flights by the U.S. military and its allies. After the war, the company moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania, where its headquarters remain to this day. During the 1950s, Air Products supported America's emerging space and missile programs, building plants capable of producing large quantities of liquid oxygen and nitrogen. With the Russians' launch of Sputnik in 1957, the Pentagon commissioned Air Products to make a new rocket propellant, known as liquid hydrogen, for the Air Force and later NASA. Air Products entered the chemicals industry in 1961, converting refinery byproducts into oxo-alcohols for use in producing plasticizers. In 1962, the company began trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol APD. Its sales passed $100 million that year. In the 1970s, the company marketed cryo-quick food freezing units that made it possible for restaurants to centralize food processing. That became especially important to fast food chains like McDonald's. Also in the 1970s, Air Products signed a 12-year contract with NASA to supply liquid hydrogen to the new U.S. Space Shuttle program. In 1978, on the strength of $1 billion in sales, the company made the Fortune 500 list for the first time. Having already expanded into Europe, Air Products pushed into Korea, Japan, Malaysia, Hong Kong, China, Thailand, Taiwan, and Mexico. Today, the company has a worldwide presence. In the 1980s, the company formed an environmental and energy systems business that focused on power generation, air pollution control, and energy recovery from solid waste. In 1986, Air Products acquired the J.C. Schumacher Company a supplier of high-purity chemicals for semiconductor. Later in the decade, APD began building hydrogen processing equipment for oil refiners. In the 1990s, Air Products further entrenched itself in electronics by becoming the global leader in production of nitrogen trifluoride, the main chamber cleaning material for the semiconductor industry. After the new millennium dawned, Air Products introduced a process to make the natural gas liquefaction process more efficient and it opened a hydrogen fueling station in its Allentown headquarters. In 2014, Saifi Gassimi was named CEO, and he quickly oversaw the spin-offs of both the Electronic Materials and Performance Materials divisions so Air Products could become a pure play industrial gases company. Major ventures in Saudi Arabia, India, China, Indonesia, Qatar, and Algeria improved Air Products' reach and balance sheet. And in 2020, Air Products signed on to help operate a world-scale, carbon-free, hydrogen-based ammonia production facility powered by renewable energy in Ni'am, a city of the future planned for Saudi Arabia. On its website, Air Products includes an A to Z list showing how it touches your life every day. Aside from the obvious, such as the helium in balloons, products that use APD gases include fiber optics, glass, ice cream and other foods, light bulbs, paint, tires, underwater exploration gear, and x-rays. Sure, it's a marketing campaign, but I'd say it's a pretty darn effective one. Now let's talk about the company's financial picture. Air Products and Chemicals wrapped up a very successful 2021 fiscal year at the end of September. At its November 4th presentation, the company detailed its numbers, 17% sales growth, 8% improvement in adjusted earnings per share, and 7% higher adjusted EBITDA. Despite an increase in energy costs and other inflationary headwinds, the fourth quarter showed year-over-year -year growth of sales by 22%, adjusted earnings by 15%, 
and adjusted EBITDA by 11%. Because investing is primarily a forward-looking pursuit, I like seeing the company's projections of 16-20% to year-over-year -year EPS growth for the first quarter of 2022 and 13-15% to for the full year. None of the earnings growth is very surprising when one looks at the company's history, which includes a compound annual growth rate of 11% over the last several years. And the good news just keeps on coming. A few days after the earnings report was released, Air Products reached a $15 billion deal with the Indonesian government to develop a coal gasification system that will be aimed at converting low-value coal into high-value added chemical products, such as methanol, enabling Indonesia to move away from raw natural resources. Low debt contributes to APD's financial standing and helps Air Products earn a solid A credit rating from Standard & Poor's. Value Line says APD is one of the most financially strong companies in its industry, earning an A++ rating. For that matter, it's hard to beat Air Products quality scores across the board, including a 1 in relative safety from Value Line, a capital allocation designation of exemplary from Morningstar, and a 95 in dividend safety on Simply Safe Dividends 1 to 100 scale. Morningstar does a nice job explaining why the company has such a predictably strong business model. Industrial gases typically account for a relatively small fraction of customers' costs, but are a vital input to ensure uninterrupted production. As such, customers are often willing to pay a premium and sign long-term contracts to ensure their businesses run smoothly. Long-term contracts and high switching costs contribute to industrial gas producers' moats, helping them generate a predictable cash flow stream and lucrative returns. We are bullish on Air Products' long-term prospect and think that the firm's ambitious capital allocation plan will fuel tremendous growth for many years to come, driven by investments in traditional industrial gas projects as well as new opportunities, including gasification, green hydrogen, and carbon capture. You know, that sounds like a pretty attractive business for investors to consider. And speaking of something that's attractive to investors, a reliable and rising dividend is part of Air Products and Chemicals' appeal. The growth of the distribution began so long ago, Ronald Reagan was in the White House. Six presidents later, the dividend has kept increasing at a double-digit percentage rate. APD's most recent dividend raise was 12% last January. The annual $6 a share payout translates to a 2% yield at the current stock price. This dividend growth has contributed strongly to the company thrashing the S&P 500 index in total return over the last 20 years. Air Products had a big advantage even without counting the dividend, but with that delicious divvy, APD had about a 12% compound annual growth compared to 8% for the index. Air Products' next X dividend date is December 31st, meaning that investors who want to receive the $1.50 a share quarterly payment must own the stock by December 30th. Within a few weeks, APD is expected to raise its dividend for the 40th consecutive year, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a hike of 10% or more. Given the current and expected growth in dividends and earnings, as well as the company's durable business model, I felt Air Products would make a fine addition to our income builder portfolio. So on Monday, December 20th, I executed purchase orders for $1,000 worth of APD stock at about $293 a share. The buy was made on behalf of this site's co-founder, Greg Patrick, who allocates $2,000 a month for the IBP. APD becomes the portfolio's 46th position. It's also the IBP's second holding in the materials sector. It joins paint maker Sherwin-Williams, which has been a market-crushing performer since we added it on February 8th. Finally, let's talk briefly about how viable Air Products and Chemicals stock is. The price has had a nice run, and it's certainly not cheap with a forward P.E. ratio up near 30. Nevertheless, 14 of the 26 analysts monitored by Refinitiv call it either a strong buy or buy. Morningstar, which is often conservative, with its fair value estimates, actually thinks APD is 12% undervalued. CFRA also sees significant upside, with a $357 price target that's some 22% higher than what we just paid for the IBP stake. Other 12-month price targets include $360 by Argus, $355 by UBS, $340 by Deutsche Bank, $331 by Wolf Research, $330 by Evercore, $320 by Berenberg, $313 by Zacks, and $302 by Credit Suisse. Value Line sees potential price appreciation of 10% in the next 18 months and up to 43% in 3-5 to five years. So while the IBP's buy of Air Products might not have been a bargain, it also doesn't seem like we overpaid for our stake in this high-quality company. For more on the Income Builder portfolio, including the table of all 46 positions and links to every IBP-related article I've written, please click on the link in the description. Also, those who like even more growth in their investments should check out the link to the other real money public project I manage for this site, the Growth and Income Portfolio. Once there, become a subscriber to our Dividends and Income website, and you'll be notified whenever I write an article about my transactions. Okay guys, that's all for today. Again, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. Take it easy, everybody. Back at you soon. <laughs>